I come to talk about the nail polish armoire that I'm going to build. Um, I haven't started yet, of course. Um, basically, what I'm coming to you is to tell you what all I purchased at Home Depot and how much I spent. Let me say too that this video is going to be very, very detailed, and it might be just a little bit advanced for those of you who don't want to use power tools. But if you're not afraid of using power tools, you can do it. Trust me. If I can do it, you can do it. I've never ever taken anything in this kind of carpentry class or anything so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to do it so first off I'm gonna show you a few things that I purchased um, I went to Home Depot and I brought the first thing I brought was some screws these were the screws that I brought I bought a box of them And I spent a total of $27.94. This is my receipt. That's the amount that I spent. $27.94. These are the kinds that I got. They're pretty long. The box that I purchased, they were $6.47. And I also brought a box of nails. This is just finishing nails. I won't need very many of these because the majority of the shelf I'm going to use, I'm going to put it together with screws probably because screws are more stable than uh, nails are. So it'll hold better with screws. But this is for the, the back when I get ready to do the back of it. And the box of nails was $3.47. And also, I purchased 11 one by 3 by 8 strips of wood. And they were $1.12 each. And I purchased one plank or one by six by eight wood, and it was four dollars and ninety-seven cents. So those were the things that I purchased, and I'm gonna go talk about the wood in a second. But this is some things that I already had. Um, also, you're gonna need some hinges because I'm, I plan on putting doors on the outside of it of the uh, armoire. But I already had the, the hinges already. I had these from a previous project that I was going to do, but I never did. So I purchased two of those. Well, I already had two of them, basically. It's two in each one. It's two hinges inside each package. I have two packages of them, so I have a total of four hinges. You're going to need these for the doors on the hinges. And you might want to purchase um, some doorknobs as well for the knob on the outside. These I ordered off eBay a while back because y'all already know I love Tweety. So these are some Tweety Bird knobs and there's two of them in there in the package. And I ordered these off eBay a while ago. I don't even remember the seller's name but it has uh, Tweety door knobs at the top of it as you can see. So I already had this. Um, you're going to need um, a jigsaw to cut the wood, a hammer, um, and possibly you're gonna where well, you're definitely gonna need a drill or a cordless screwdriver, whichever one. I'm gonna use a mine. It converts from a screwdriver to a drill, so it's like both of them. And you're gonna need a level so you can make sure that the shelves are even when you uh, nail them in. When you screw it together and also the uh this is the picture of the old nail polish rack that i built this was just a temporary thing that i done to just to put my nail polish up on a rack so i could see it so this was something i did probably in like an hour it was just a quickie thing that i did so this is the way that uh i used to store my nail polish But now my nail polish has grown so much. Plus, when I did the shelf, it wasn't even enough space on that shelf to put all of my nail polish. But now I have nail polish and foils and glitters and acrylic paint and all that. So my nail polish art and collection has really, really grown since I did this shelf. So I basically took that shelf down off the wall, and I'm going to salvage that wood. I'm going to use some of that wood in the new shelf as well. So I'm not going to throw the wood away. I'm going to actually reuse it if I need it. Okay, so this is the wall area we're going to do it on. I'm going to do the shelf from here, from this end, all the way down to about 
here. As you can see, I have a CD rag here with nail polish stuff on it. And this is not even all of it. But this is where I'm storing some of my nail polish right now. All this is going in the armoire after I build it. Though. This is the wood that I'm going to use for the actual shelves to put. I'm going to set the nail polish on top of the shelves. You can see how wide it is. It's about two and a half, about two and a half inches uh, wide. And to give you an idea, this is a bottle of China Glaze nail polish. So you can see how much space. I have space on this shelf, which is perfect. That way I can set the nail polish back. I don't have to worry about it sliding off the edge. So... Um, this is important too. Um, when you purchase the wood, you want to make sure you get one, just one plank of wood that's wide as two, two of the shelves that you're getting. As you can see, like these, this is um, this is the nail polish shelf, so you can see how wide that is. And I purchased one plank of wood, as you can see, that I had them laying on top of it. This is wide as two two of the shelves. This is going to be the shelf. This is going to be the top area. Area. So you want to make sure this wood is twice as wide as this. I also had some of this wood here, and this is like wood actually for staircase. And you can see how thick it is. It's really chunky. Um, I already purchased this. I had this a while while ago. I'm going to use this as the legs on the armoire. And I'm going to have four, one in each corner. So it's not going to be very wide. This is as wide as the shelf is going to be right here. This is how wide it's going to be. This. So it's not going to be sit, it's not going to sit out very far. But it's, it's going to store a lot of items on the inside of it. So I'm going to use this for the legs. So that's basically it. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to measure your space and estimate how long you want your shelf to be. So I'm going to start off by taking the the widest wood that I had, the one plank of the widest wood, and I'm going to cut it. Okay, so I measured uh, the space, and it's going to be four feet long. That's how long my shelf is going to be. Um, basically, what I did, I measured it off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the widest board, the one plank of the wood that I had that was really wide. I'm pretty much going to cut it in half. And this is the halfway mark, this little pencil mark that I did up the center. So I'm going to go ahead and take my jigsaw and cut that right quick and then I'll be back. Okay, so I cut the, uh, the wide plank of wood into four feet long. That's how long it is now. So I have two pieces two four feet long or boards so next what I'm going to do I'm going to take this is the wood I told you I already had and I'm going to take this and I'm going to screw this one in each corner of the wood so I'm going to screw one here one here and then on the other end of the board I'm going to screw one at, at the top and one at the bottom so I'm going to do that and I'm going to put two screws inside each one because I want this to hold really really good Okay, as you can see, I put two screws in it, each one. And I'll try to get back far enough so you can see. It's pretty long, the legs on it. And that's the other legs. So you can see why I had to raise it up because I had to clear the uh, gas line that's in my house. So that's the way it looks so far. Okay, so I found a better setup. I'm hoping that you can see better now the length of it. Um, just ignore the cords on the floor. Um, it's just different things that's plugged up in here, which I'm going to tack those around the wall later. But anyway, so this is the uh, piece of wood that I just cut here to go at the bottom area to cover up the legs. And basically what I'm gonna, going to do to this, I'm going to... Um, actually draw a design on it and cut it out. I'm going to be able to show you because I, I'm not able to film me actually cutting the wood out. It's going to go right in the bottom of the armoire like this. And it'll, I'll screw it in from the top and it'll fit thick flush against it to cover up the legs. And I'm going to cut two little small pieces too going each side of it, which will be on this side over here. And that side really won't be seen, but I'll, I'm, I'm going to do that side as well. I want to actually, I'm just going to take, this is my little Tweety Bird waste paper basket. I'm going to use it as a guide. 
So I'm going to start in the corner on this end. And one second. I'm going to use this piece of wood here as my guide. So I'm going to paint this afterwards. So the mistakes that I make is, doesn't really matter. The pencil marks rather that I'm going to make. So I'm just going to take it. And let me see if I can move my camera a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. One second. So I'm going to use this piece as my guide here. This is the end of it. I'm just going to draw. Quick flush. And I'm just going to draw a straight line down. Like that. Hopefully you can see the pencil mark that I just did. And uh, the pencil mark that I did on that end, I'm going to do the same thing. On this end, I'm going to draw a guide on this end. And next, I'm going to take this is just a waste paper basket, but it's not trash in it. I just keep I got rollers in it actually. So I'm just going to take it and sit it. I'm going to put it flush against the line that I just did. And I'm going to trace around it. As you can see the mark that it left. And I'm going to go down to the other end. That's the line I drew on this end. I'm going to do the same thing on this end. I'm going to take the wood again. The piece of wood that I had as a guide. And this all makes sense uh, once you see when I cut it out. Pretty much. As a guide. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. So I'm just going to be going back and forth like that until I get to the center of the wood. Until I get to the center, and I'm going to do another circle here. But this time I'm going to go up. A little further than I did the last time. do the same thing down on this end. I'll do the same thing right in this area here. Like that. So this is the center of the board here. So I'm going to take this piece of wood and lay it straight across like that. Draw a line. And I'm going to zoom out so hopefully you can see the full piece of wood. And it looks crazy right now, but when I cut it out, you'll see the design better. So that's the way it looks. So I'm going to take it and I'm just going to cut on the pencil marks that I just did. I'm going to go cut it out right quick and then I'll be back and show you exactly what it looks like. So that's the way it looks. So I'm going to take it and I'm just going to cut on the pencil marks that I just did. Okay, so I cut it out, the design, and that's the way that I decided to do it. 
um, I cut it out and I attached it to the uh, bottom part of the frame already. I didn't attach it with screws. I used finishing nails, which is a little really extremely thin nail to attach it because if I used screws, it would have split the wood. This is a different type of wood. This is a sheet of some old wood that I had laying around already. So as you can see, if I use screws, the way this uh, wood is made, it would have split the wood. So I had to use nails on that uh, part. Um, I also used a bead of wood glue right down the edge of this. I used a bead of wood glue all the way down it before I nailed it to it so it'll, it'll hold better. Okay, so this is a, a another piece of wood that I cut. And what I'm going to do with this wood, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this wood here and cut a piece of it and attach it to the side over here to finish it off. I'm going to do that for both sides. I'm going to cut a piece and attach it to that side and then to the opposite side. And I'm not going to do a design in it, anything like that. It's just going to be just a little straight block of wood. I'm going to go ahead and measure that, the sides of it and cut it. So I took the, uh, the thinner wood that's not very wide and I took it and I took two planks and I cut it uh, for the sides of it. So this is will be how tall the shelf is going to be. I cut it five feet and seven inches uh, long. And I also took some more plank, the same wood, and I cut about, I only cut two out of uh, five feet, seven inches. And the rest of the wood, well not all of it, but I took um, some more of the wood and I cut it. Uh, this is three feet ten and a half inches long so the planks that I cut three feet ten and a half inches long I cut about ten I think I cut out ten to begin with I might have to cut some more I'm not sure but I cut ten to uh, start me off with which I'm already sure I'm gonna have to go buy more of these so now what I'm going to do I'm going to take the the longest pieces and put them on each side like this Maybe a side here and the side there. Basically what I'm going to do is create just a regular square box bookshelf out of it. I'm going to move my camera closer so you can get an idea of the reason why I cut this wood this length and everything and how it's going to attach to this. Hey, okay, so I'm sorry if the video was a little dark, but um, I want to film this in the room that I'm doing it in because I don't want to have to move it after I build it. So, um, as you can see, this is the back corner of the shelf here against the wall and you can see why I have a pencil mark right here so this is where the wood is going to attach it this is the longest piece here so this will be the side of it and I still have the tape on it. I'll pull it off later so this is going to attach here and you can see how much room I have here so what I'm, my plans um, are the doors it's going to be actually like bookshelves as well. So when I open it up, it'll be shelves on the inside of the door as well. And then it'll be shelves back here. That way I'll get double the amount of space out of this unit. So I want to get all the space that I can um, for my nail polish and nail art uh, supplies. Because I probably, I know me, I'll be buying more supplies. So basically what I'm going to do is going to build, I'm going to take this wood here and just build like a regular shelf out of it. So I'll do that as you can see how to attach it at the bottom and I'll do another uh, piece at the top and the two long pieces on the side so basically what I'm going to do is just make a square box and I'm going to do that um, off camera and I'll take some pictures and post it in the video because it's too hard to try to film actually film me screwing it together and everything which is that's pretty much self-explanatory so I'm going to go ahead and screw that together and I'll take a picture of it and afterwards I'm going to start laying in the shelves in the middle of the uh, bookshelf so I'm going to do that off camera. And two things I forgot to mention one um, as I'm putting the shelf together I'm actually using wood glue and screws as well I'm putting a bead of wood glue along the lines of it before I um, screw it together and that's just to make it hold better um, the screws alone would be fine but I just added a uh, wood glue on it as well so this is what I'm using here, carpenter's wood glue. And also, um, the wood that I cut 
before I actually attach it, as you can see, it's like some look. You can tell where I cut it at. So I'm just taking like a piece of sandpaper, and I'm just sanding off by hand. It's really easy. It comes off really easy. And sanding that those little pieces of wood off, so you can see it's smooth now. Before I actually attach it to my shelf. So those two things I forgot to mention in the video. I'm using wood glue to, on everything. I'm putting a bead of wood glue on everything before I attach it. Okay, so basically what I did was made a big square. And I'm sorry, my camera, I can't back my camera back far enough so I can get all of it in focus. I tried, so I wasn't able to do it. So this is the picture of what you're looking at right now. So um, this is the shelves that I did. I told you I cut like uh, basically about 10 planks of wood out. And I think they're about 3, three, three feet 11 inches, I think. Mm -hmm. That's about how long it is. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start laying in the shelves of the unit. I'm going to start and I'm going to... Um, I'm going to space them just a, enough space between each one for a nail polish bottle. So I'll be able to get a lot of shells from this unit all the way down. So I'm going to go ahead and start screwing those in next. Um, I cut about 10 of these out already. So I'll see how many I can fit on there. Plus I want to leave enough space at the bottom of it to uh, place my nail polish remover and stuff like that. You know, some of the taller bottles and things that I use. And down the center of it, um, where I'll be attaching the shelves at, I drew a line. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in so hopefully you can see it better. You can see the pencil mark that I did down the side, down the uh, center of it right here, right here and right here. I did that. This is the width. This is some wood that I had. It's like some crown molding uh, trimming wood. And it's really thin, as you can see. So um, I'm going to screw... I'm going to put used finishing nails on the shelves, but I'm going to use one screw in the center of each shelf. And I'm going to screw the, the screw in the center of this. And the finishing nails, I can put those on the outside because when I paint it, you won't be able to see it. So I'm going to put a screw in the center and I lined, I penciled it off because I have this trimming wood here. And after I do the, um, this is something that I had. I didn't purchase this. I purchased it a while ago, but it was something I have quite a bit of it left over from a project that I was doing a while ago. So I'm going to use this and um, cover up the screws. I'm going to put this down the side in the center. And plus it gives it uh, some decoration added to the shelf as well. It makes it look really decorative. So I'm going to put that down to cover up the screws. The finishing nails, when I paint it, you won't be able to see those. So that's what I'm going to do now. Right now what I'm going to start doing is basically um, laying in the shells on the unit. So um, I'm going to lay in probably about six or seven shells and take a picture of it. And um, I'll add it to the video. So I'll just be taking pictures for, uh, for a while and I'm um, updating you on how I'm coming along. Okay, so um, this is a picture of what you're looking at now. Like I said, my camera won't back back far enough so you can see it. But this is a picture of what you're looking at. So I pretty much finished the back half of the shelf. Um, I also, as you can see, I painted it gold on the ends of it. And I also added contact paper to the shelves. And this is what the contact paper looks like. So hopefully I'm in focus. I don't know. Um, I'm using my backup camera because I forgot to charge my other camera. But anyway. So the next thing I'm going to do would be, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do and then I'll be back after I've done all of the things that I'm going to tell you about. 
Um, I'm trying to keep from making this video so, so long so I can get most of it. So I can get most of it. Okay. So you remember when we started at the bottom half of the shelf down here. Okay, so this is the pieces that came out of the bottom, the curves that I did, these four pieces. And I thought about it, that I could use these as well, so I'm going to use these. This is the long plank of wood, the other half of the widest wood that we cut when we first started. So this part is going to go on the very top of the shelf, all the way at the top. And what I'm going to do, which is going to be hard to show you without dropping. See if I can read this up Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these little round parts here that I cut out and I'm going to nail those. I'm going to add wood glue on them too and nail them and I'm going to go all the way across this plank of wood. If I can do it without dropping it. And I'm just going to nail those in like this at the top, all four of them. And I'm going to leave a little space in them for decoration. Um, I'm going to nail those down on this board first. And then after that, I'm going to attach it to the very top of the armbar, um all the way at the top. So that's the next thing that I'm going to do. And after that, um, I'm going to do all this and then I'll come back. The next thing I'm going to do is, I purchased uh, some thin wood. You can see how thin it is. This is how thin it is. Really, really thin. I think I, I went back to Home Depot uh, yesterday because I needed more wood. I purchased this and I purchased uh, 10 more planks of this slim wood for the shelves. And I spent about $20, $24, I think. So this is the thin wood that I purchased here. And I was going to paint it. Um, where I actually was going to contact paper it like the shell, but I changed my mind. I really like the way the wood looks on this side. It has like some little dark like designs and stuff in it. I really like the way it looks, so I think I'm going to leave it plain like it is. So what I'm going to do is, this is not the piece that I'm using. This is the piece that I... Okay, so the, this is the bottom of it. As you can see, I've added crown mold into the bottom of it. And this is a picture of what you see. I know you can't see it very good on, on video, so this. And as you can see, I've added the, um, the little thin, the little thin wood to the back of the shelf. You can see that. And I really like, I was gonna, going to paint it, like I said, but I decided not to because I really like the way the wood grain effect looks. Uh, behind it, so I'm gonna let it stay. And this is the top of it, as you can see. And the little curl, the little swirls that you see at the top, is actually the excess wood that I had out the bottom when I cut the at the bottom when I cut the pieces out at the bottom. So I decided to add it to the top, and I added a uh, crown molding around it as well. So I'm basically finished with this part of the unit other than painting it. That's the only thing I have left to do is to paint it. So next one I'm going to be working on is the doors. It'll be two doors on it on the unit. So that's what I'm going to be working on next. And actually the doors is going to consist of two small bookshelves basically. So I'm going to put it together pretty much just like I did this but it's just So I'm basically finished with this part of the unit other than painting it. That's the only thing I have left to do is to paint it. So next one I'm going to be working on is the doors. It'll be two doors on it 
on the unit. So that's what I'm going to be working on next. And actually the doors is going to consist of two small bookshelves, basically. So I'm going to put it together pretty much just like I did this, but it's just... Okay, so this is the uh, bookshelf that I'm working on now, Michelle, and I'm extremely tired of it. This is like um, half of it, and this is the picture of what you're seeing right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make, I'm going to feel finish filling this up with shells. I'm going to put, um, I might could get probably about six more shells in there, I'm not sure how many. But I'm going to uh, finish putting shells in it, and then I'm going to build another unit exactly like this one. This is going to be the door, and um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, take this and I'm going to attach it up here, right on top of this, and it will fit right into it. And I'm going to use hinges, so I'll be able to open the door up like this, and on the inside it will be shells, it's up like this. And on the inside it will be shelves as well. I'll be able to open it up like this. And it will be shelves on the inside of it as well. And the outside of it, I'm going to nail the same wood that I showed you that I nailed behind this bookshelf. I'm going to nail that in the front of this to cover all this up. And I'm going to do some artwork on the outside of it. But that's going to be a separate video. So uh, I'm going to build two units like this, so it'll be two, one on this side, one on this side, and I'll be able to open the doors up on both sides. Because I want to get as much storage space as I possibly can out of this. Because like I said, I got a lot, a lot of nail polish and nail art supplies. And I actually tried my nail polish in the rack on the inside of this bookshelf, and it filled all the shelves up, just the nail polish. That's not including the rest of the stuff that I have. So I want to make sure I have enough space. So then I'll do that. I'll build this, finish putting shelves in this unit. Then I'll build another unit on that side. And um, basically the same, just like this one. I'm going to do that off camera. And then um, I'll come back and give you an update on it. Uh, or as I know, as of right now, I don't think I'm going to have to go back to Home Depot. to buy. Well, I have to go one more time because I need one more sheet of this thin wood behind here behind that I showed you that I nailed behind the bookshelf. So I do know I need that. But after that I don't think I have to go back anymore. I think I have everything I need. If I have enough wood, which I'm hoping I do. Um I basically um salvaged the wood from the old nail polish rack that I had hanging on the opposite wall. So that's what this is. I cut it and I used it first and I, I got some more wood yesterday. So hopefully it'll be enough. So, um, like I said, I'm going to finish this up, add some more shelves and some more wood yesterday. So, hopefully it'll be enough. Okay, so I finally finished the armoire on the uh, outside and everything. And I nailed the wood on both sides. You can see this is what it looks like on the outside. And I'll show you the inside of it. Hopefully you can see it, the inside. and the doors on this side. And I'll take some pictures of them because I know it's wider than my camera is. So um, I'm not able to get it all in focus really, really good. But I finished the inside of it and everything. And like I said, I nailed the wood on the outside of it already. <coughs> Excuse me. The next thing I'm going to do is I have a couple of more things that I'm going to do. But let me tell you what I did also. Um, I also purchased some of these little air brackets. Let me get closer so you can see it. I purchased some of these little brackets, and there were um, corner brace braces. That's what they have on on the package. So um, I purchased some of these, and I it was four in the package, and I think I used three. I used three of them. I put one in the center and one on each end of the at the top of it, just to brace it at, uh, against the wall so it won't be so wobbly and it'll be stable. And if someone bump it, it won't come tumbling down. The last thing I want is all my nail polish to be all over the floor when I put it in there. So it's really, really, as you can see, you can't even shake the unit now. It's really, really tight against the wall, so I don't have to worry about it tilting over or anything because the wood was kind of thin, so it was top heavy, so I had to brace it against the wall just so it'll be really really secure 
Um, also, I what I plan on doing afterwards. I have to add the doorknobs on. The things that I have left to do is I have to paint it, add the doorknobs on it. And also, I'm going to buy some of these little magnetic um, things. This one broke, actually, but I'm going to purchase some more. This is an old one that I had, but I'll show you what it looks like. And what you do, you attach this part to the top of the cabinet and this to the door. So when you close the door, it'll stay closed really, really good. It helps the doors to stay closed, actually. It's like a, mag a magnet. So I'm going to uh, buy some of those. And... Um, for each door which you can see they're pretty much staying closed right now but I still want to do it just to make sure the doors stay closed on it um also on the inside which I can't even open it now because there's no doorknobs on the, I have to add the doorknobs on it too I haven't did that yet um on the inside of the shelves just under doors I don't have to worry about this part because the nail polish is not going to slide or anything when I open the doors but if I put nail polish on the inside of the doors, uh, it's possible that they might slide. So I add this little wood to the top of each shelf. So this is what it looks like on the inside. I know I don't want to keep moving my camera, so I'll, uh, I'll take a picture of it and uh, add it to the video. So this is what it looks like on the inside of the doors with the wood to hold it. So I added this on, like I said, so when I open the doors, the nail polish won't slide off on the floor since I'm, since I'll be opening the doors back and forth, back and forth, so I don't want it to slide off on the floor. So I did that in both doors. Um, I'm going to add the doorknobs on there at the very, very last end. Um, also, I plan on adding some more of this little thin wood like this. I'm going to add it around, all the way around the doors. So I'll add it from on this side. I'll just frame the doors basically. I'm going to frame them out. So I frame all the way around here, all the way around the edges, all the way around and at the bottom. And I'll do that next. That'll be after I paint the doors. That'll be the next thing that I do. Um, also, I hand painted an image on the door. But I drew the image on already, already. And I drew it in pencil pretty much. So I got the image. Um, I searched the internet for an image that I really, really like, and I printed it out on a little small sheet of paper. So basically what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to hand paint it with um, the image part of it, this part. I'm going to hand paint with just some regular water paints, acrylic paint, like this. So I'm about to begin uh, the hand painting on the shelf. So these are the brushes that I'm using. I bought this at Walmart and they came in a set. I think it was like $5 or $6 or something. And these are all the brushes that was in there. And this is for acrylic water paints. So these are the brushes I'll be using. It's quite a few different types. Um, I'm not sure exactly which ones um, I'll be using, but I'll probably use all of them probably. And these are the various paints that I'll be using. Um, they're about most of them are about folk art and apple barrel. So that's pretty much the main uh, colors that I'll be using. It's, I'm using quite a bit of different colors, and these are the paints that I also use on my nails as well. So I'm going to paint the unit with that in the brush. I'll just use these little water-based paints, like the same ones that I use on my nails, and um, afterwards. I'm going to um, paint it with a clear sealer to seal it in because it's water paint. So, you know, water paints, you have to seal those in with something. And after I paint it, um, I'll be sealing it with this. This is some polyurethane here. It's a clear gloss. It's basically all it is, a clear gloss. Uh, so I'll seal it with that. But that'll be the absolutely last thing that I do on top of it and I'm going to probably use like a, a thin coat of polyurethane on it with a, a paintbrush and I'll paint paint it on top and that'll be just for the doors. Uh, the rest of the unit I'm going to paint it with an off-white uh, paint and it's kind of like a creamish paint. I haven't purchased it yet but I'm going to go and purchase some. 
Um, the paint is actually by Dutch Boy. It's uh, called Fresh Parchment. I think that's the name of it. I'll check and make sure, but I believe that's the name of the paint. So I'll just paint the rest of the unit with white and a little trimming around the uh, doors after I added the frame around each door. I'm going to use this with, I'll paint it the same color. So that is basically it. So now I'm getting ready, since I drew the image on already, I'm going to get ready to actually start hand painting it on top of it. And I'm going to probably use like a, a thin coat of polyurethane on it with a, a paintbrush and I'll paint, paint it on top. And that'll be just for the doors. Uh, the rest of the unit I'm going to paint it with an off-white uh, paint. And it's kind of like a creamish paint. I haven't purchased it yet, but I'm going to go and purchase some. Um, the paint is actually by Dutch Boy. It's uh, called Fresh Parchment. I think that's the name of it. I'll check and make sure, but I believe that's the name of the paint. So I'll just paint the rest of the unit with white and a little trimming around the uh, doors after I added the frame around each door. So I'm going to use this with, I'll paint it the same color. So that is basically it. So now I'm getting ready, since I drew the image on already, I'm going to get ready to actually start hand painting it. So I finished um, putting everything into the armoire and I still had a little bit of space left, needless to say. I think I have one shelf at the top here that doesn't have anything on it. And I have one shelf over here that's free. And I could like store this stuff a little better and I can probably get about two, maybe three more free shells on this side if I ever have to do it. But right now I'm going to let it stay like it is. But basically I just want you to see overall how it looks. So basically this is the picture of what it looks like right now with everything inside of it. So I was able to get all of my nail polishes in here. I have some in the door. The majority of them is on this uh, part of the unit though. result of the outside of the armoire. Um, this is the hand painting that I did and I also I painted it white at the top and at the bottom and on the sides I painted it white on the sides and the doors of course I've hand painted the, those and the little wood trimming that I put that I showed you that I put around I decided to do the wood trimming on the doors black to make the picture stand out a little more. So um, that's the way that I did it and hopefully you like it um let me know what you think about it i will talk to you later youtube till then take care